The Stargate franchise may be famous for that big round portal that lets you travel to other planets, but after five years of adventuring, the show's writers decided to mix things up. In SG-1 sixth season, Earth developed its first ever interstellar ships, finally making use of all that alien technology SG-1 had discovered along the way. The fleet that followed would change the texture of the Stargate TV series. Here's a rundown of Earth's seven battlecruisers. First came Prometheus. The predecessor of the BC-304 class ships is Prometheus, originally designated X-303 during its development and construction. The ship took a number of key elements from Goa'uld technology in order to create Earth's first large-scale ship capable of interstellar travel. It proved pivotal in defending Earth from Anubis's forces at the Battle of Antarctica under the command of Major General George Hammond. Later, Prometheus would be commanded by Lionel Pendergast. Despite receiving upgrades of Asgard shields and weapons, however, the ship would prove no match for an Ori-designed weapon satellite orbiting the planet Tegalus. Prometheus engaged the weapon in combat and was destroyed, with some 40 hands still on board. The Daedalus Only one ship of the X-303 class was ever built, as Earth's engineers instead moved to develop the more sleek and enhanced BC-304 class deep space carrier. The first to roll off the line was the USS Daedalus, with Colonel Stephen Caldwell given command. The vessel even had its own Asgard engineer, Hermiod, assigned as a liaison. Since an expedition to Atlantis had recently made contact with Earth following months of radio silence, Daedalus was dispatched to cross the vast emptiness of space between the Milky Way and Pegasus galaxies, delivering much-needed relief and support during the Wraith siege of the ancient city. Daedalus would continue to operate as a go-between from Atlantis to Earth, delivering supplies and personnel in a round-trip journey that takes a little over a month. After war with the Replicators broke out, the ship spent more time on assignment in the Pegasus Galaxy, where it would be a key factor in the final battle of Asurus. The Odyssey With Daedalus spending so much time in Pegasus, Earth needed one of its shiny new ships that could stay closer to home. After the destruction of Prometheus, the USS Odyssey became a crucial support vessel for Stargate Command. Under the command of Colonel Paul Emerson, the ship frequently served as a base of operations for SG-1, particularly when the planet was not easy to access discreetly by means of the Stargate. Odyssey and her crew also rescued SG-1 on more than one occasion by beaming them out of trouble just in the nick of time. It was also the Odyssey that took the team through the Supergate to the Ori home galaxy. There they managed to put an end to the Ori invasion saving the Milky Way once again. The Apollo Under the command of the no-nonsense Abraham Ellis, Apollo commonly provided support to the Atlantis expedition and the Daedalus. Like Daedalus, it traveled across the void between the two galaxies. It was Apollo that made a preemptive first strike against the replicator homeworld of Asurus, sparking a war that raged across the Pegasus galaxy. The Korolev after revealing that Russia was in possession of a Stargate and a DHD of their own, the country and its military became a necessary ally of Stargate Command. The Russian liaison officer, Colonel Chekhov, was happy to have a say in SGC operations while letting the Americans take most of the risks off-world. But when the chance came for him to command his own ship, crewed by Russian soldiers, Chekhov jumped at the chance. The Korolev rolled off the line just in time for the Ori invasion. This new enemy had created a supergate in order to invade from a distant galaxy. But the ship's first mission would also prove to be its last. The combined forces of Earth and its allies could not stop the Ori warships from pushing through the blockade. The Korolev was destroyed in the battle, and all hands lost. The Sun Tzu Sun Tzu and her captain were never seen on screen, but they did play a part in the defense of Earth from alien attack. With an international alliance on Earth gaining more influence, the Chinese soon followed the Russians in having a deep space carrier to call their own. Alongside the Apollo, the Sun Tzu intercepted and engaged a super-powered Wraith hive ship headed for Earth. The ship was crippled and venting atmosphere, 
and the Apollo took on her crew before limping home. It's possible that the Sun Tzu was eventually repaired and recovered, but as of the final episode of Atlantis, it was likely left adrift in between galaxies. The USS George Hammond Originally to be christened the Phoenix, the vessel was renamed in honor of the first commander of the SGC following his death in 2008. Its commander is none other than former SG-1 officer Samantha Carter, now a lieutenant colonel. The ship helped to defend Earth from the Wraith Superhive, then later ferried personnel to Earth's secret new Icarus base. But the base came under attack by the Lucian Alliance. While Nicholas Rush and Eli Wallace worked to unlock the Stargate's ninth chevron and evacuate the base, Colonel Carter and her crew engaged in a pitched battle in the skies above. Today, the George Hammond remains one of the premier vessels of Earth's growing fleet. Thanks everyone for watching. Visit us at GateWorld.net to explore more ships of the Stargate universe, and leave a comment below with your suggestions for future videos. Subscribe to the channel now and enable alerts to make sure you see all the latest videos from GateWorld.